Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson, and you are listening to the Squash Buckley Diaries podcast, the epic fantasy podcast, the daily epic fantasy podcast about Joy Shelley's life in the dream. We follow her from birth to death, and we take our time about it. She lives a life of adventure, and we are at the end, the last part of a ten uh, episode arc called "In the Land of the Giants," where we tested. Both Joy and Justin to the limits of what they're capable of. As far as Joy is concerned, we we pushed her to close to death. We'll see what happens now. I will not tell you what happened. Uh, you should go back and um, and listen. Uh, and we tested Justin in that he can't find his daughter for two days now in a dangerous place where she needs him to survive for food and drink at the very least. So he disappeared for the second day in a row. When he reappears again, it'll be two and a half days that she's been without drink, without water, and wounded, and waiting for him. Let's see what happens now. Episode 193, In the Land of the Giants, Part 10, The Butterflies. Joy's age four and a half, told by the Red Dragon. Dragonfather reappeared on Bunny's Revenge. It was the third day the Dragon Lil was missing. He had searched for her for two days all across the forest in the land of the giants, but fruitlessly. Unknown to him, she had been waiting for him on a leaf at the top of one of the trees in the forest, not moving from that place as he had instructed her long ago. When Dragonfather appeared, the wind returned. The wind moved Dragon Lil's long, braided hair, and she woke up with a start once again. She looked up. He looked down from a great height. I saw him make a face. He walked around himself in circles. What would she do? What would she do? What would she do? He whispered to himself endlessly. Oh God, I hope she's okay, he sighed after a minute. He looked down again and suddenly his eyes lit up. He held both hands in front of him. A swarm of thousands of butterflies rose suddenly from every crevice of the forest. They are beautiful and colorful. They rose slowly. Dragon Lil, only four and a half years old, looked around herself as three different giant butterflies rose next to her slowly and then moved past her. The butterflies flew towards Bonnie's revenge and gathered around Dragonfather. Go find her, he told them. Go find her. Repeat until you found her. The butterflies swept down into all corners of the forest, creating a blanket that covered the forest in its entirety. They disappeared into the forest, settled on the ground, blanketing the ground almost entirely. After a few minutes, they rose slowly, rose past the shrubs, the trees, the greenery, ever so slowly. They rose to the top of the trees. Dragon Lil gasped. She understood. She walked to the edge of the leaf, but too slowly. She had been too exhausted. She missed the butterflies, and they flew past her. Now she stood with strength. She seemed revitalized. She stood on the edge of the leaf and waited. The butterflies flew to Bunny's revenge, then, after a few minutes, returned to blanket the forest floor. After a minute or two, they rose again slowly as one. Dragon Lil looked over the leaf and waited for them. When a butterfly was near enough, she jumped on its wings, then to its back. The giant butterflies continued upwards in the same pace, taking the same route. Soon, Dragon Lil jumped off the butterfly and was back on the deck of Bunny's revenge. Joy! Joy! Dragonfather ran to her and hugged her, crying. Oh my God, thank God you're okay. Feeling his touch, Dragon Lil fell to the ground with no strength. Water, she said hoarsely. And that is the story of Dragon Lil's bravery and determination at such a young age. And how Dragonfather saved her before it was too late. Told by the Red Dragon. And that is the story of Joy's life. And that is the story of Justin. This is how she grows up. This is how she'd been prepared through years of adventures 
at four and a half years old, she's already experienced with adventures. Most of them are not that dangerous for her, but she, all she knows, the best thing she knows is how to survive in an adventure, how to win, how to survive. And her father, when he's desperate, he can utilize the power of the dream when he wants to. Usually he can't. Usually he doesn't know he's in a dream, but now that's what he did, and he found a way. Why did the forest not disappear? That's a good question. We'll find uh, an answer for it in the future. Uh, there is a part in Lost in Dreams, book one, when uh, she, Joy, is so experienced doing this at age six, that someone, another character, which we haven't uh, found yet in season one, uh, looks at her and says, you know, in shock, she's Superman. And of course, she's not Superman. She can't fly. She's not invincible. But she does things that a six-year-old child can't and doesn't. And with um, confidence, she knew what to do with the butterfly. She knew to wait. And her father finally figured it out. And that's Joy's life. And that's what the Squash Buckler Diaries are about. To find out how a future heroine uh, is born. It comes to be. So, we are done with this arc. Next time, other stuff. <laughs> Come back tomorrow for more interesting stuff about how Joy lives in the dream and the dream and life in the dream. And now, the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form and in fact 150 Squash Buckler Diaries more. The Squash Buckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website because The Girl in the Dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson at gmail.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, at gmail.com. The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hasson, and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more. Thank <laughs> you.